centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Hello, I'm Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the 50th edition of the Pimento Report. It is the 22nd of May, 2012, a very important day. There is going to be a demonstration today on behalf of the Quebec student movement. And also, this is the day when Jean-Marc Léger has come out in public and said something crucially important about this generation, this young generation in Quebec. Jean-Marc Léger is arguably Quebec's most important, significant pollster. He put out a statement, a kind of declaration today. The students are in their hundredth day of striking over tuition fees. They do not want them to go up. Monsieur Léger has warned that the 60s generation, which has had such an influence here in Quebec, is actually crushing the people below them. He says the 60 people got very, very reasonable tuition fees, and yet they're denying that kind of rationality to the very young people who are going to university today. Jean-Marc Léger says that behind the student strike, there's something much deeper, a desire for change that is not going to go away. And one of the things that people are now very angry about is something called Law 78, a deeply undemocratic law which limits people's right of assembly, of speech, of association. And that is yet one more thing which has raised the temperature in this strike and this social struggle which involves the young people of Quebec on the one hand and the government, the liberal government of Jean Charest on the other. <laughs> Duckett, you teach history at Dawson College. What do you make of today's demonstration? Uh, it turned out really good. People aren't turned off by the possible rain or anything like that. That's a sign of how people are reacting to the, uh, to the new law, of course. Um, Jean-Marc Léger made a very interesting set of remarks in Le Devoir today, saying that there's a, a whole new thing happening here between generations. What do you make of that? Especially evident today, even more so than the 22nd of March, I find much more of a mixture of generations here today, which is of course a great sign. And what do you think is the main issue now? Respect. Respect and people's power and democracy. Have you been shocked by the violence from no, the police? I'm, I'm shocked by any violence. I almost expect there would be more, but it's, it's very predictable. The law almost pushes us towards that in some way. The situation causes that. And as a historian, does this fit into Quebec history, do you think? It does, but it pushes it in boundaries that we've never seen before. The idea of making connections across so many strata of society, that's, uh, that's not too common in Quebec. Back in May 68, they hoped to join workers and students. They did that a little bit. This is more than that. This is a social movement in very many ways, I find. So it's truly new. Yeah, exactly. What do you think of this demonstration and the ones that you've been covering in the last uh, in the last weeks? Um, well, I think they're a great example of what people can do when they put their minds to something and they, they band together. Um, I think the slogan of uh, people united will never be defeated rings true, especially on days like today. It's a beautiful thing to see people taking back their democracy and remembering that it's about them and not the government. And the government has to remember that too because they're no longer working for the people. Can you 
tell me why you're here today? Yes, I'm here because I don't want to live in a police state. And I think Bill 78 smacks of police statism. Too many arbitrary powers with the police, too much hindrance. I liked very much what The Voice on uh, the CBC radio program The Current said yesterday, which was in its satirical way saying, all slogans must be submitted to the slogan permit office before being chanted. And I thought, yeah, it's almost coming to that. Has the Sherry government put itself in a terrible corner with this legislation? Oh yeah, I think it's been behaved really stupidly from the beginning. I think when they came out of the weekend negotiations and said they had something in principle, tentative agreement in principle or whatever it was, he then crowed that the government hadn't given an inch, which of course was going to infuriate everybody. It was the stupidest thing I ever heard. The minute I heard him say that on the Sunday, I thought, okay, they won't take it. Um, how dumb can you get? I've been watching your reports on the street, and you've been there night after night. Yeah. What have you seen, when, if you make an overall statement about what you've seen, what has impressed you most? I started out supporting the students, and the more they they were dealing with basic issues, not just not just tuition, but but, but the whole question of free education, the more I supported them. And now I'm here because of this dread. But Chade just doesn't know how to behave himself. I mean, it's awful. This law, it's just awful. It's totalitarian. I don't know where his head is. What's the thing that most strikes you about Bill 78? That it's a, a crude attempt to squash a movement which is not squashable, it's not going to work, and it's, it's crude. It's so crudely put together. I can't believe Chade is so stupid. Um, Jean-Marc Léger in today's Le Devoir made a very interesting set of observations that this is also also involves generations here, and oh, especially yes. this new generation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mean the, the strike? The strike oh, yes. and well, many of the oh, things we've seen this year. It's well, it's part of the Arab Spring. It's part of the Occupy movement. It's part. It's part of a whole movement of young people who feel alienated. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel that they can see the future? and they are fighting very hard to change it? I think that that's, uh, that's true of many, many of them, and those are the ones I support, yes. Um, there's been up and down, uh, especially in the, um, the night protests. Um, the numbers were dwindling uh, right before Beauchamp quit. It went up from about 300 to uh, the day after she quit. We were at least 1,500, 2,000 people. And of course, since the Law 78, we've had people join in who you know, were kind of indifferent um, about the uh, tuition hike. But of course, this involves everyone now. It's bigger than the student movement, so a lot of people are waking up. Après 100 jours de grève, une vague de contestation déferle sur Montréal. La mobilisation autour de la cause des étudiants ne s'essouffle pas. Vous croyez en nos règles, pour ne pas les atteindre. Je pense que les jeunes ont une vision du Québec dans le futur. Enfin, ils nous réveillent. You have watched Montreal over the years, many protest movements. What strikes you about today? Uh, what strikes me about today is that thousands upon thousands of Montrealers are actually standing up for civil liberties, in addition to a broad social agenda for social change in Montreal and Quebec society. And I think that's particularly significant. The issue of student fees has broadened 
Uh, it has absorbed the Occupy movement and has uh, put some more substance into, uh, into the issue. And now there is a clear connection between the question of education as a whole and the social contract in which our society was bound into in the past, which certain forces are trying to dismantle. I have to say, though, that I'm also particularly disappointed that the City Council of Montreal passed a uh, bylaw, which is obviously not applicable and not, cannot be implemented, as you can see from the demonstration here today. Uh, there are thousands of people who are wearing masks, and there are thousands of people who are opposing that bylaw also. So all of this fits together, and I think we're moving into a new era, a new, a new social movement is being born, and I'm very pleased about that. Lucia just now, your companion over the last years, generations, about this remark that uh, Jean-Marc Léger made about a new uh, movement beginning, exactly that, and this rising generation as well. He really put his finger on that and urged people to pay attention. Can you feel that too? Well, it seems to me that's what we see in front of us today, right here in the Place de Festival. If we're not blind, if we're not deaf, we can see that a whole generation has been engaged, much like the 60s. I'm a, uh, I'm part of the 60s generation, so I know what it feels, and I have that same feeling here today.